clock is ticking on what could be three weeks of intense negotiations over border security before the stopgap spending measure the president signed into law expires. Joining us here in Washington, Republican Senator Roy Blunt, who is part of the bipartisan conference committee working to hammer out a deal in the next three weeks, and Joe Manchin of West Virginia, the only Democratic senator to consistently vote in support for funding to build a wall. Senators, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you. Now, Thank Senator you, Manchin, let's, let's start with you. Okay. Mick Mulvaney posed the question in our last segment, what are Democrats willing to do here? What are Democrats? I think Democrats want to look at basically the whole holistic approach, immigration reform, pathways forward to some people. Basically, I've always said people came two ways. They came the wrong way for the right reason, wrong way for the wrong reason. The people came for the wrong reason want to make sure they go out and stay out. You need border security for that. But I think people that came basically for the right reason have been productive ought to have a pathway forward some. That would change the whole the whole complexion of this. The whole dialogue would change if that could be done. As far as the 5.7 billion, if that's number, we're figuring how do you how do you split that up? And let the professionals. We've proven it's hard for us because with the president and White House and the legislature, we've locked horns on this thing, no wall, all wall, halfway in between. Let the professionals tell us what it takes to keep us safe. Drugs is a big problem in my state. Absolutely. Drugs are coming in. How do we stop the drugs? People that basically, the terrorists, are, and everything has been reported. I don't know. I would talk to Will Hurd and ask Will, are you having mm -hmm. that problem in Texas? So we need to talk to people that understand on the front lines and also professionals that can kind of be a deal maker, if you will, help us find the right path. So, Senator Blunt, you're going to be in on all of these negotiations. Do you think that compromise is possible here, knowing that Nancy Pelosi has said time and time again, no money for a border barrier? I think compromise is the essence of what we do, and, and you know I think the American people are tired of watching a government where people get locked down for no reasons except maybe political reasons. I mean, clearly, the president showed shown real flexibility here uh, for a guy who's not always that flexible. I mean, he has changed his view of this as he's gotten more information about how you secure the border, about ways to do that. Uh, we have consistently said that barriers were part of that. The president uh, went from talking about a wall along the entire southern border at one point during the campaign as part of a campaign discussion to, well, let's have barriers where they work and let's have something else where barriers wouldn't work as well. Four presidents have built barriers. Uh, Joe and I both supported uh, that when we've been in the in the Congress, and I think there's a there's certainly a way forward here. But part of the way forward is look at the other issues that are out there too that need to be dealt with, uh, and deal with those the spending issues that are going to be right in front of us as soon as we get this done. One of the things we learned uh, this year was if you do this the right way, you can have. You could have 100 percent of the government funded by the beginning of the fiscal year. This time we got 75 percent of the government funded. That should be one of the lessons we learn here. What do we need to get on the table right now so that we get 100 percent of the government uh, funded? And how do we deal with the border is an issue. I've always thought securing the border first made the most sense. And then I think the other problems uh, related to immigration are much easier to sir solve if people think that the government has done its fundamental job. And you know, nobody will have ever had more credibility on this than President Trump if he says the border is secure at the level that the American people should expect. Then the other discussions about what are the legitimate workforce needs of the country, what do you do with people who came or stayed illegally, about half the people not legally here came legally and then decided, gee, we're in the United States of America, this is a great place to be, let's just not go back. Sounds like you've got a lot uh, so to talk about in the next 19 days. We do, we do, but I, I think days. these are not new issues, yeah. is the other point, John. This is, these are not issues that no, of members of the Congress don't know a lot about. Uh, there's nothing we're going to learn, frankly, in the next three weeks. We don't know right now. So let's get started. Let's find solutions. Let's not continue to disappoint the people we work for by not showing the ability to work together. And Ronald Reagan learned back in the 1980s the dangers of cutting a deal on one part of immigration before you get security. Thing about that. In 2013, we passed a major immigration reform bipartisan bill, mm -hmm. which took everything. It was a holistic yep. approach. It was security, $44 billion yeah. for security. It was a pathway forward. It was a cue number that you basically got in the back of the line. We did everything humanly possible to look at the whole immigration problem. So and on top of that, nobody, if they went through 10 years of doing everything they were supposed to do, 
earn, uh, learn English, uh, basically get a job, pay taxes, get in the back of the line. When your time came, you still couldn't be a citizen until we had the total border secured. Sure. But if we're going to have this fight back and forth, if we're not going to fix one and we're going to think one takes care of the other, so security only without some but I, but pathway I think, forward. But I think the president has, has indicated that he's willing to negotiate a bigger package on immigration. But here's the question I have for you, Senator Manchin. You have voted, as we pointed out at the top of this, consistently for a border barrier. Many of your Democratic colleagues, Nancy Pelosi in particular, don't want to have anything to do with that. What do you know? that they don't see about a border barrier. The only thing I know is I had 800,000 people that were furloughed, were not getting paid. I had 12,000 in West Virginia. People were but, hurting but, immensely. But why, so why, but why I... is a border barrier acceptable to you, but it's not acceptable to so many of your Democrats? Why do you I see value speak, in a border? I can't speak. Why do you see value I in a border barrier? I see value in a border because I've, looked, I've talked to the uh, Custom Border Patrol people, and these are the professionals that I rely on. They've showed me and told me what needs to be done. There needs to be some. We already have 600 plus miles of some type. So of why is that lost on all of your colleagues? Well, I think it's lost because now it seems like the border is going to protect us in, within 700 miles or so of wall or a fencing or whatever. I'll call it a secured structure. It's going to be the catch-all, do-all. That's not the case. There's an awful lot more. We can stop most of our ports of entry is where all of our drugs are coming through. Can't we have the screening, the new sensors, things of that sort? Ports of entry where our big container ships. But isn't that what the president is proposing? Like a package that well, includes all of that? You know, Senator Manchin, we, we are good friends. He's been consistent on this. I frankly think, and this is his position has been consistent. Many of the Democrats in the last few months have looked at the president making this a big issue in his campaign, and they've decided, well, we can't be for that anymore. Uh, 2013, virtually every Democrat who's still in the Senate voted for 700 miles of barriers and a whole lot more money than anybody's mm -hmm. talking about right now. Sir, Speaker Pelosi has been for barriers in the past. You know, it, the, the whole idea that somehow 650 or 700 miles of barriers are appropriate, but 702 miles are immoral, that is a incredibly... Uh, interesting place to draw your line about what's moral and what's not moral. I think this debate got way too political. I do think, let me say again, I think the president has shown more room, willingness to move so far than others have, but we need to solve this. We need to solve it in three months. It may look like right now that the, uh, the, the Speaker Pelosi got what she wanted, open the government again and we'll talk. The we'll talk part of that now is where we really are going to see the speaker either step up and talk along with Senator Schumer or find out that we'll talk really didn't mean anything. It just meant give us what we want and then you're not going to get what you want. You, you talked to the president a lot uh, in December he head, heading into the Christmas holiday just before the shutdown. What were you telling him then? Well, basically we talked. I didn't think this would ever happen. I said for the first time, Mr. President, you've got six bills ready to go, totally unanimous consent that we all voted on. Mitch McConnell put it forward. The breakdown came basically the request for the fiscal year 2019 budget for the for the uh, homeland security mm -hmm. was 1.6 billion dollars that was appropriated then it went to the house and the house bumped it up to five mm -hmm. then it became in contention so they were going to put that one on a 30 day or let's say to february the 8th and put that at 1.3 continuing resolution and then fight that one out i thought that's exactly where the president would go he got pushed from the base he jumped up and says, no, we're not going to. Never before have I ever seen when we all agreed unanimously on six bills that would have kept 90 percent of the government open, 96 percent of all money flowing for the government to operate and hold that hostage. And so much harm was done. I don't know if anyone realized in the, in the White House or the president how that would react. And I think they saw the pushback. We can't go down this road again. Well, we and, need and to find the, a path. On the one six billion, which frankly is what the administration asked for right. this time mm -hmm. last year, one point six billion, that clearly included uh, walls or barriers sure. or whatever. I think surely we can deal with the semantics of this. Uh, and. Uh, then the, the House stepped in with a much bigger number. The president liked that number better. Yeah. Uh, but 5.7, I would say it's better than 1.6. Exactly. And lots, but, of, lots of Democrats, John, in the last week 
put 5.7 out there as, as, as a number they were willing to do. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to be a little more specific about how you do this. You know, the, uh, under President uh, George W. Bush, we had a major move going toward a virtual wall yeah. for the parts of the barrier of the, of, the, of the border that the president now says needs something like a virtual wall rather than an actual wall. Well, he says he uses the word smart walls, but look, exactly. there's the, the, clock, the clock is running, so time, time is running out. Time's running out on us. Time is running, that's right. But uh, Senator Blunt, the, the president has uh, threatened either another government shutdown or an emergency declaration at the end of this if he doesn't get what he's looking for. You have said, quote, shutdowns are bad politics and even worse government and on an emergency declaration that precedent could create real problems in the future on other issues right. so I mean, what, are we looking you know, at, a, is that at another shutdown? After 35 shutdown? days of this, the president also thinks shutdowns are, are, are not such great politics and bad government. I, I think I just heard Mick Mulvaney say the same thing. We, we would all prefer to see this negotiated the, the, the way it should be negotiated. Uh, I happen to agree with the president on, a barri on, on barriers at the border and border security as an important first step. Uh, but there might be a future president that I don't agree with that thinks something else is an emergency. I think it's a bad precedent. I hope the president doesn't have to go there. If we'll do our job, he won't even have to consider going there three weeks from now well, because we'll, we we'll have reached the right kind of The only of, way we can ever uh, stop agreement. this, and I, I've thought everything about how you ever right. stop this from happening a shutdown, if within three weeks, the one thing we could do to help the American society, the American economy, and the American people is to make sure if a shutdown ever occurs by our own making, our pay stops immediately the day the shutdown. Trust me, there will not be a shutdown. Everything else we can talk about, all the policies, you stop the paycheck, the same as everyone else got hurt. The only people that got hurt was all the people working for the government. Congress didn't get hurt. Yeah. Nobody felt the pain. Do you predict success or failure in this negotiation? I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic. I think we've all seen the, the, everybody step out into the new world we're in, Republican Senate, Democrat House, new speaker, Republican president. Uh, the initial touching of the gloves was not producing the kind of result <laughs> that we need to produce here. So uh, I, I'm optimistic, and uh, we need to work hard to see that we find how we can solve this in a way that the president gets what he needs, but the American people fundamentally get the government that they deserve. Well, we, we will see. I mean, the very fact that we got you two on well, together I, this I morning is maybe a good start. And we both want exactly. the same thing. We want our, our borders to be safe and secure. We want to stop the flow of drugs. We want to keep the uh, people who basically are coming for the wrong reason and preying on our economy. Keep them out. And when you th take them out, make sure they don't come back. All these things are set. But there's a people that need a pathway for it. They've been very productive. And there should be some compassion towards that. We will see where this goes. Senator Blunt, Senator Manchin, good Thank to you, have you on this morning. Thank you.